Good day YouTube and welcome to the review of my brand new bike, the BMW F800R. I must say this is probably the least reviewed or maybe least loved bike, judging by how few times this bike appeared in the press when it actually launched. And yes, I've got myself one of these about five, maybe six months ago. And as I just found out, as you can maybe see by the dirty crash bar down there, it's not a very good dirt bike. No, not at all. Yes, I just dropped it over there. So, let me do this review in the way that I believe BMW designed this bike. Let's start with the rear end. Pretty big chain and very good back brake. As you can see, these are stock metaller tires. Here we have a massive, nice sounding exhaust. Even stock, this thing makes a wonderful noise. And as you can see, ABS on the back brakes. I will lose a few words on that on my Ride It review that I will hopefully be doing soon. That brake is just wonderful. It's set up so well. It's unbelievable. It even lets the back end slide around a tiny bit until it catches you nicely back in. So for the front we got sort of adjustable suspension. You can't really see it from this side can you? Alright that's better. So this is a partially adjustable rear suspension. You can adjust preload with this nice knob here and down below here this black little knob adjusts the damper so that's nice you can set up the bike from fluffy easy back end to racing like hard and very well to control on tough roads so moving on further is the motor the f800r's motor is basically just a motor from the f800 gs which has been around for i don't know 10 years must be and it's just been a bit retuned for I think a bit more horsepower and it's got about the same torque too. You can check all that out on BMW's facts page that they have online. Again a part in the middle, something that I have fitted myself is of course that crash bar, the motor protection bar as BMW calls it. Um, very useful as I found out for the second time today and the motor cowling, protector, whatever, that plastic piece down there goes all the way around to the other side and as you can probably see there's a cutout down here so these two parts actually fit together these two parts are not meant to be on the bike at the same time by the di designers but if you've ever seen a video with Chris Pfeiffer who rides this bike professionally as a stunt rider he has the same setup and it works just fine if you are handy with say a small saw you can make this fit Perfectly. This is the engine protection bar mounting from the other side where I have cut a slit into the motor cowling to make these two parts fit together. If you want I can put a link down in the description where you'll find some instructions on how to modify this. Down here you can see the foot packs and uh, the shift lever, all machined from very nice aluminum parts. Same goes for the pillion footrests. In general this bike has a very nicely done fit and finish. For example tapered handlebar comes narrow right about here and all the parts for up here example triple clamp very nicely machined all parts nicely rounded no sharp edges whatsoever so nicely done BMW. One other detail that also came with this bike is this nice plastic rear cover for the rear seat. Um, the reason why it's so shiny is because I almost never put it on. I usually have the silver BMW bag sitting on here, which serves me very well. Um, this bike comes with standard LED rear lights, at least the last model that I got did, and optional LED blinkers. Very nice. On the front, same story. Let's lift up the saddle and see what's underneath, shall we? So this thing opens up with a keyhole right here. Twist it and 
yeah, it snaps back. So, what do we have down here? First off, of course, fuel pump, some control module. Over here is the canvas plug with which to read out all the diagnostic stuff and the locking mechanism for the saddle. On the underside of the saddle is the most sad little tool set I've ever seen on a bike. There's a small wrench over here that's strapped in. There's a two-sided screwdriver that you can put in front or back and there's a Torx slash Allen wrench tucked in there. So yes, they do expect you to buy some more stuff here. On the front we have dual disc brakes, again with ABS of course, from Brembo. These brakes are extremely good. Um, they allow an actual easy just to control stoppy in the dry and in the rain they give you very good confidence to stop this vehicle on a dime. One other piece of protection equipment that I fitted to this bike are these axle protectors or sliders as they may call them from GSG Moto Germany. Um, same thing at the back, you see these big knobs protruding there. Um, you can either use them to prop up the bike on a paddock stand or yes they protect the entire axle assembly from actually touching the ground once you would do a low sider. The front suspension is a standard suspension, no upside down fork here, but it does its job absolutely wonderfully. I've never found this lacking in any aspect, and as you can see up here, it's not adjustable. But that's absolutely fine by me, this bike is wonderful anyhow. Coming to the instrument cluster and headlight assembly, this is probably the only real part of this bike that BMW engineers didn't design so well. Let me try and explain to you guys why. First off, what you can see here is not a skewed or weirdly formatted video. This is actually how the cluster looks like. The speed gauge is an oval. Yes, that means essentially around the 50 kilometers per hour or 30 kilometers per hour mark around here, you can't really see how fast you're going because the needle is not even touching the numbers. Up here, however, it's going right into the little dashes here. So, dear BMW, what the fuck? The same really with the RPM gauge, it's an oval, but let's face it, you're not going to look at that as often. The other big issue with this instrument cluster assembly, which is actually bolted together with the cowling windshield, whatever I should call it, is that they're both mounted on these little plastic stalks down here. So, two little strips of plastic holding up the entire front portion of the bike, minus the headlight. That means as soon as you're doing just the right rev range, or anywhere about 120 plus, this thing is going to shake violently up and down, as in two centimeters at the top here. That means, first off, this is going to look really fuzzy, and two, you can hardly read the speedo. So sorry BMW, again, what the fuck? So, I went to an aftermarket dealership and got myself these nice little brackets. They're on both sides. You can see it down here again. They're made from sturdy metal and they essentially provide the stability that wasn't ever there in the first place. Now, everything's solid. Let's turn this cluster on. It's actually quite nice when it goes on. Beep. There we go. I did the bleep just now, by the way. So yeah, it has a self-test. Um, it, I'm not sure if you guys can see this. It has a board computer. Oh no, there you can see it. Um, with a gear shift indicator and all the other bits and pieces. You can see I've ridden this bike for just over 6,000 kilometers now and it's been one fun ride. This would not be a BMW bike if it didn't have handlebars that are heated. Heated grips, wonderful in the winter, like now. Beautiful November. Yes. Those are some nice trees up there. Turning little leaves every which color. The heated grips actually have a nice little indicator logo here. I'm gonna turn this to level two, off, back on to level one, level two, and off again. So, yep, the board computer tells you how hot you're about to have your fingers. Like most current generation BMW Motorrad models, 
This bike also has a very recognizable front face, meaning an odd headlight assembly. On this one though, unlike on the small T650 GS, the headlight output is actually quite decent and the way it throws the light onto the road is just perfect. So I didn't have to do any modifications there. By standard, this bike also comes with a steering dampener. I am not sure if this bike actually needs it, considering how well planted the front end is, but let's leave that decision up to the BMW engineer, shall we? One other pretty useful piece of equipment that I fitted, actually coming from the F800 GS, so the Enduro bike, are these handlebar protectors. Solid steel mounted with a large bolt here and some more screws and a bracket over here. Again, these are not supposed to work on this bike, but they perfectly fit. I don't know, I guess they just didn't think of this as being a crossover the way I've made it. One more piece of equipment that I fitted to it from the aftermarket that it, in my opinion, definitely should have come with, but just didn't, is this mudguard here from Puig. And as you can see, at least it keeps most of the dirt off the suspension and the back end here. The last extra piece of equipment that I fitted is this GPS navigation system holder for a TomTom -tom rider. I can absolutely recommend it to anyone wanting to find curvy roads. Yes, it actually has a function for that. Dropping it in dirt, check. Dropping it on an ice sheet on a mountain pass in the Alps, check. Using the similarities between this bike and its Enduro bigger brother to fit on weird parts that were never designed to be there in the first place, but oddly enough fit just fine, check. Putting fun stickers on it, check. As you can see from the overall look, this is a sporty naked bike, meaning you have a more relaxed position than on an actual sports bike, but it still has the grunt and feel and chassis of an actual sports bike. So let's wrap up this quick bike review just by saying this has been one of the best bikes I have ever ridden. Um, and I've tested quite a few as you may have seen in one of my other videos. It's just a blast this thing. As always, thanks for watching and see you in my next video where I will do a let's ride of the BMW F800R.